Hello my soccer universe, this is a video I never thought I would make. We are talking about suspending, or Serie A, Serie A has been suspended. They were about to have a meeting on Tuesday evening, now on Monday evening, the Prime Minister of Italy declared all of Italy to kind of a special zone with, with uh, limited travel and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a little bit out of a nightmare, the whole scenario, I have to say. But on the other side, I understand it. Uh, you don't want this virus to spread more and Italy really has a problem um, with it. Very, very obviously. Uh, so, all I'm gonna say now is always under the, uh, under the assumption and so on, or not uh, assumption, under the statement that getting people healthy, this is a public health crisis, this takes precedence over everything else. Totally under, it's totally under, understandable. We already see games cancelled in um, France. We had the league suspended in Switzerland. They actually did this rather quickly. And come to think of it, I would love the Austrian league to be suspended because of that. Uh, maybe even the rest of the championship cancelled because we have a final table. And it's just coincidence that also my favorite team is Lask is currently first in that one, so they could be the clear champions already in March. Take that, Liverpool. We are ahead of you. No, uh, in all seriousness, this takes precedence. Um, and I want to just talk about what is what can be done now, because uh, international soccer does not necessarily stop because of that. I think in England they have not talked talk about it. I know Germany, the talking really closing states stadiums uh we have that all uh matches uh, with italian teams have to be played behind closed doors i'm honestly wondering with uh the league suspending it italy becoming this special zone can they even play internationally do the italian teams need to withdraw uh we also have that basel against frankfurt the return leg uh does not have any um uh, it has, has not gotten the go-ahead, so it is a big crisis. Let's focus on Serie A. I mean, what I read yesterday is if it's suspended, what they are hoping for the league. And uh, I think it's good that the um, Prime Minister came down with that verdict, because I am no, have no trust in Serie A officials in resolving this matter. Absolutely no trust because they are always thinking about their own advantage Who wouldn't and there is no common consensus there um, The question is of course who will become champions if at all uh, I think most Serie A owners are kind of hoping that yeah, let's ask UEFA to postpone Euro 2020 and make it Euro 2021 a Big bear a big bear there. I think uh, Rome as a place of Euro is seriously in doubt at the moment. Uh, nothing has been confirmed yet because UEFA is just waiting. It's happening in summer and we expect that once it gets warmer, the crisis abates and that could go ahead quite nicely. But yeah, you're back down in 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 in, in the corner then. Uh, if that doesn't happen, you cannot push the championship further um, back if there's Euro 2020. Unless you say Italy withdraws from the tour tournament, which I doubt they will. Um, then you ha can play the championship uh, in a very condensed uh, every two days. No one's going to go for that. I mean, that's just killing players. So what's your last option? Abandon the championship. Uh, so I guess you will want to add um, another cha a ghost championship to their three to their, their two that they're already claiming. <sighs> Lazio will feel hard done by because they surely want to go this championship to continue because they are in a great shape to actually make this. Well, I'm wearing Juve. Uh, we will see. In this, you'll know already. They won the derby. They already did it. Out. That's why I decided. I was already thinking about an Italy jersey when I said that. Let's stay Serie A with that one. So yeah, it is a very, very, very tricky situation. I was actually thinking, um, for now the ban is until April 3rd, meaning a month will pass. Honestly, if you ask me, I would uh, make it condensed. I would uh, take, I would actually cancel everything that happened in January and February. 
That's a tough, tough call. I, I, I said maybe we don't need to understand what I'm saying, but I would say cut the championship and have top ten, bottom ten. Um, count only the fixtures between those that have been played, and then play according fixtures, fixtures accordingly. And yes, um, eleven to twenty play against relegation. The rest plays for the championship. Make make a playoff. Uh, you could make it a uh, tournament style. Take the top sixteen in the league. The um, make a three and then decide who gets in the Champions League. The last four stands as any will be in the Champions League, like Coppa Italia. But I think this will not be that fair. But I think such a shortened championship could work. The other thing is, but that is now uh, really the, I think in Italy at the moment is a no go zone to play. Uh, and you have to seriously, seriously consider doing that, even uh, if you want to play Champions League there. Um, could you move the games? outside of Italy. Is there any country that would allow you to go outside of Italy? And I'm thinking actually the Gulf states at the moment. I mean, Qatar probably is licking the fingers to get some serious action there. Uh, you know, it could be that extreme. I am never advocating for it, but if, if it's a matter of finishing the championship, uh, move all the teams out. Move all the teams out, have them play. Uh, away from home and, and that's how you decide the championship. I mean, playing behind play, close doors, you might as well play in Saudi Arabia or Qatar or, or, or whatever. Am I in favor of that? Absolutely not. But if you want to finish the championship, that becomes a viable uh, alternative. If you want to play it in Italy, uh, assuming that up until April 3rd, everything is done, I would, I would go for this splitting the league. Top 10, ball, 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 bottom 10, take all the results that have already been played between those and uh, make a table that way. Not pretty, but you know, extreme measures need to be taken at the moment. So yeah, let's talk about the little bit of action that happened uh, over the weekend. It was all behind Class 2 and it was weird, really weird. And it actually started really weird as well because Parma and Spal were ready to play. And then uh, they were already, you know, the uh, reserve <laughs> players were already on the bench. The players line lining up and suddenly comes, maybe we, the whole round gets cancelled. We cannot play in, in, anymore. A little bit waiting. Uh, Parma and Spal is playing. Uh, Spal gets a win. Uh, there, which is very important for their survival, where Parma, actually, Javinho, I think, missed a big one. Milan Genoa, I watched that game, I mean, I had to do work, but, uh, and had Lusk uh, close by. Oh, Milan, actually, in the first half, it didn't look that bad uh, going forward, but they caught two counters in the fifth minute through um, Pandev, and then uh, just before the half, uh, they catch another one, Ibrahimovic can pull just one back, but... Uh, and the weird thing is when you take Jalen Ogli on the Rebbe, Rebbe just starts under, the whole thing looked even worse. It was not a good showing. I do have to say that the empty San Siro, um, if you take the right camera angles, it doesn't look that crazy. Uh, the sound is off, but at least the game itself looked all right, it has to be said, be said because, you know, San Siro, the people are actually quite high up. Um, Sampdoria gets a 2-1 over Hellas, Udine Fiorentina play a draw, and then Juve Inter, the big one, played ahead of closed doors, uh, uh, behind closed doors, not ahead of closed doors. Uh, did you see Ronaldo fake clapping everyone? I have to say, the weirdest thing of this entire game was uh, the pre-game handshake line, where I think they just went with the elbows. Then, you know, after the coin flip, that... Um, a referee and so on and, and captains are not shaking hands they're just doing thumbs up to it to each other kind of awkwardly and then after the game and during and, and, and during the game you know when goals were scored all for Juventus um, they forget about all, all of that of course I have to say Juventus played well uh, especially I think the first 20 25 minutes uh, Inter was not on the field and Inter could get a little bit uh, I think Brozovic forced a save from Chesney, uh, but overall it was all Juve. Then in the second half, Inter comes out. You think that now, oh, they get something going. And at that moment, um, Juve with the first attack goes into the uh, box. Ronaldo actually lets Ramsey shoot. Uh, the ball gets off the heel of the fry. 
into the net. It's 1-0 in the 54th. And then uh, a little bit later, the big, big Dybala show. Um, he is assisting himself. Uh, he plays the ball uh, to, uh, to the side, I think, to Ramsey, who gave his back and then with a wonderful touch. And uh, with the outside of office left, of puts in the net. Wonderful goal. If this was the last goal that's of Serie A season, this would have been the goal of the season. Uh, you were very deserved winners in the Derby d'Italia and claiming again top spot. And then yesterday evening, Sassolo completely destroys um, Brescia. So in the table at the moment, and we still have some games to be played, but now it looks a lot more even. We have Juve a point ahead of Lazio. As I said, it's crazy. Uh, Inter, Atalanta behind. Inter, I think, is more or less out of the tight title race. I mean, sure, there's a chance, but it's very slim. Uh, Roma, Napoli on the spots. Then Milan, uh, that loss did not help them now in seventh. Um, Verona, Parma, yeah, this is all this midfield. Bologna, uh, when I look at relegation battle, yeah, it is now. Fiorentina is not, and is not entirely out of it. Cagliari probably also. But it's Udine, Torino, Sampdoria, Genoa that are above the line. Lecce is floating around there. And Spal and Brescia don't look all that good. Very, to finish this video, let's go to uh, Turkey. My <laughs> new favorite league at the moment because there's so much happening. But actually there is, uh, there was something big happening because Bejakse here is putting the stamp on the championship at the moment. Last year they were almost looking like champions and they fell flat. They get a win at Gösteppe. Uh, Trabzonspor only a one vote at Gaziantep and also Galatasaray only 2-2 two -two at Sivospor. Um, Besiktas won, but you know, Besiktas and Fenerbahce are more or less other, but Besiktas at least won, Fenerbahce is falling out now. So this means in the table now that Besiktas is three points clear of Trabzonspor and Galatasaray and Sivaspor. So it's still very tight, but it's kind of a four-way race potentially. Uh, Besiktas, Alanya and Fenerbahce are behind and they will make the final spots there. Well, uh, no grease today because they are preparing for the playoff. If I don't know what the situation is there. Um, in any way, let me know your thoughts about coronavirus stopping Serie A. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Um, just as a personal side note uh, to this video. This is video number 900. I'm going to celebrate soon with two jerseys. They are not very celebratory to me. But let's see. <laughs> Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.